That's right, and today is a special occasion. It is, because it has two of my favorite words in math. Problem solving. That's right, problem solving. We're doing a lesson 7.10. We are at the end of this chapter. Woohoo! Yeah, we did it, my friends, and we just need to get through this one lesson today. And the topic, of course, being problem solving, but it's about finding unknown lengths. Yes, and, of course, we have that essential question. Our learning target says, how can you use the strategy, guess, check, and revise to solve problems with fractions? Very cool. Don't think I've even heard of this strategy. This is going to be great. I've heard of the guess and check, but there's a guess, check, and revise. And you know what I'm going to say. That's right. We can't do any of this unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now. It says Sarah wants to design a rectangular garden with a section for flowers that attract butterflies. She wants the area of this section to be three-quarter square yard. If she wants the width to be one-third the length, what will the dimensions of the butterfly section be? Woo! Whoa! My head is spinning! Okay. <laughs> well, first thing I would probably say is let's go back a little bit and think to ourselves, okay, what do we know about area of a rectangle, right? And the length. If you know the area of a rectangle and the length, can you find the width? Because I'm thinking about that in this problem. And you know what? Actually, we can. Yes, we can. You see, I could divide the area by the length to find the width. Because length times width equals area, then area divided by, you got it, my friends, by the length is going to give me the width. Whew, that might come in handy. But you know what? Let's go ahead and read the problem. And we may need to go back up to the problem, but let's go ahead and take a look here first. What do I need to find? Oh, I love this part. Because this is really, yes, this is the question they ask us, basically. And it says, if you recall in the problem, that it had to do with the dimensions. They want to know the dimensions of the butterfly garden. Because we have the area, she wants the area section to be three-fourths square yard. Okay, and she knows she wants the width to be one-third the length. So we need to know what the dimensions are of the butterfly section. Okay, so let's go write that down. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, it also says, what information do I need to use? Ooh, okay, all right. It says, the part of the garden for butterflies has an area of, oh, we know that, that's from the problem. Yes, Three quarter square yard. I remember. Yes, I do. Do you? Okay, and it says the width is. Yes, the width is one third the length. See, that's what's neat about reading that problem over a couple of times because you get familiar with the problem. Now, how will I use the information? This is where we're talking about the whole purpose of this lesson. We were supposed to use this guess, check, and revise method. I will, and we're going to literally say, I will guess. <laughs> Imagine that. And math. I will guess the size of the butterfly area. Then I will check. That's right, because we're going to be checking my guess, and I'm going to revise it. If it is not correct, I like it. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Solve the problem. Oh, I'm scared now. I'm not scared. Bring me some math. Okay. Although I am kind of scared about eating asparagus when they turn cold. Ooh. Ooh, just gives that little chill down your back. Scary. Okay. I can try different lengths and calculate the widths by finding one third the length. For each length and width, I find the area and then compare. What an idea. If the product is less than or greater than three quarters three quarters square yard, I need to revise the length. Oh, I see. I like this. This is going to be 
fund. Yes, because look, we already have a check here. So we have the first one. Look, it says the length is three quarter yard. Okay. Now the width in yards is one third that length. So look what they did. They just said one third times three fourths because that's what it means. One third of, that's right, multiply. You get one quarter. And now you come over to the area and the area we know is, you know, they don't have that written down anywhere. Actually, quite surprised. They must just think you guys are just so smart because you're fifth graders. But area is equal to length times width. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. So three quarters times one quarter. There you go. Three sixteenths. Ah, too low, right? We need that area for the butterfly garden to be three quarters. Okay, so this is try a longer length. Now they're telling us to try two and one quarter or nine fourths. I'll try that. Let me go ahead and work with nine fourths. So if I took the same and did the exact same thing, so okay, let's take one third times nine quarters. Yeah, uh huh. I'm gonna end up with nine over 12, right? And nine twelfths, hmm, isn't that interesting? Nine twelfths happens to be, in simplest form, three quarters, because if I divide out a three, divide out a three, I end up with three quarters. But here, we need to take the length times the width. So if the length we're saying is nine quarters, so I'm gonna rewrite that problem here, nine quarters, nine fourths, same thing. And then I'm gonna multiply that by, that's right, our new, which is nine twelfths, which is three quarters. And that's going to equal then, ooh, 27 over 16. Well, that doesn't make too much sense for us because it is an improper fraction, but you know what I'm telling you already? It's too high. Yeah, because we're trying to get an answer, right? We're trying to say, hey, we need the area to be three quarters, and this is much larger because this is a fraction greater than one. So let me just write that in here. Two highs, and that's what they did up there. They put too low. That means that we're going to have to try. We're going to have to try a shorter length. So try a shorter length. Yes. So this is just guess and check. So we could keep going back and forth. Well, two and a quarter. I mean, how much farther do we drop off? I mean, here you figure three quarters and then that's really large. What if I just doubled three quarters? You know, what if I just said, okay, since the two quarters is really large, what if I just said one and a half, since one and a half is double three quarters, All right? So we'll try that, which by the way, uh, as an improper fraction is three over two because you have, yeah, that's right. You have two over two here plus one over two. That's right. Okay, just a reminder how we change that into that improper fraction. Or, I'm sorry, they call it the fraction greater than one. So now I'm going to take my three halves then. Uh, but it's going to get multiplied with the one third because we're finding one third of three halves. And that's going to equal three over six. And three over six, well, you guys know that actually one half. Now, I come over here then. I'm going to say, I'm going to, again, take my length because length times width. Length was three halves. My width now, we just determined it was right here, is one half. Oh, look at, oh, I'm liking that. Oh, my goodness. Three quarters is what we need. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My voice is really getting high there. Correct, Amundo. Yes. Correct. I like it. Revise. We're done. We get the old check mark. Yay. No, I don't know, whatever. With a happy face inside. Hello. Okay. Now, so the dimensions of Sarah's butterfly garden will be, yes, one half yard by one and one half yard. And that makes a lot of sense. And my answer seems reasonable because, because think about it. We're taking one third of the length. So whatever the length was, that's our L. We're taking one third of that. So that's almost like saying then the width is, or the length is three times greater. So it's almost like the width is the width times three, right? Because we're trying to find one third of the length. So that would also mean that it's the width, right? And it's going to be times three, whatever that is. And it turns out and that's going to equal the length. And look at that. If you think about one half, one half, one half, one half, that's three times. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. It's already time. Page. Page master. Woo! Oh, look at it's a kitty. Hey, hello there, kitty. Oh my goodness, look at you. Aren't you fast asleep? Hey, what's up, kitty? Oh, can I give you? Can I can I give you a little bigote here? Let me, yeah. Let me give you a little big. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, those are like your whiskers coming out. There you go. Oh, no, Mr. Warrior, you're writing all over his face. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry, kitty. Let me erase that. Okay. Ooh, that was just... Mr. Warrior, that wasn't very nice. 
Okay, I'll let you sleep. Sorry, I do like your little pads on your. They're, they're so cool. Yes, I grew up with cats, so I'm pretty familiar with cats and dogs, really. Okay, and now I have reptiles. What happened? Okay, now I'm a reptile fan. Give me a leopard gecko and snakes. It says try another problem. Okay, let's do that. This one's not going to give us near the kind of help like we have had. So let's look at this carefully. Marcus is building a rectangular box for his kitten to sleep in. He wants the area of the bottom of the box to be 360 square inches and the length of one side to be one and three-fifths the length of the other side. Ah, sneaky. They don't even give us the word width in there. What should the dimensions of the bottom of the bed be? Now, if we're looking for the area, and I'm going to start doing a lot of underlining here. Okay, first of all, when we're looking at area, you know, we're talking about some unit squared. Square units. That's what we're talking about. You have to have square units. And square units, as you may know, is having like unit squared. It means the same thing. So if you had meters, it could be, I don't want to put equals meter squared, but you get the idea. It's equal to any kind of squared unit. It could be meter squared. Let me write it over here. Okay, it could be centimeters squared. It could be inches squared. That's the unit we use for area. Okay, and so we know that it has to be that. And he wants, we already know what that amount is. It's 300 square inches. So there you go. That's our area. And remember, area, and I would always write this down. I hope you don't mind, Kitty. I'm just going to write it alongside here. Okay. I don't, I don't want him to wake up. So here's area length times width. There you go. So we have the area. Now it says the length of one side to be one and three-fifths the length of the other side. So at least we have a comparison that one length is being compared to the other one. What should the dimensions of the bottom of the bed be? So we're looking for the dimensions. This is just like their last problem. So let's just say, yeah, we, I, let me put, I need, we need, because you're working with me, right, guys? Yeah. I need to find dimensions of the bottom of the bed. Cool. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. What information do I need to use? All right. So we definitely need to use the, and I'm just going to write like, we're going to need to use the 360 square inches. The 360, and I'm going to write it square inches. Okay, I abbreviated, yes, I know that looks like a G. It's supposed to be a Q. So we're definitely going to need that. Um, and we're also going to need to use the, yeah, the comparison, right? That one side will be one and three-fifths, my friends. Yes, times the length, times, which you already know what that means, of the other side. And of course, that other side we could refer to, as that's just the width. Okay, so we know that the length is one and three-fifths times longer than the width. How am I going to use this information? Hey, what was this all about again? Guess, check, and revise. So that's what I'm going to do. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Woo! Okay, we move on. Two. Yes, solve the problem. <laughs> I want to do this just old school, you know, with my... Could I make it neat enough? Let me see. I don't know. Not just straightest lines in the world. We had, remember the section, we had a guest section, which doesn't really need to be too wide. And then, um, okay, I shortened... Uh, I didn't copy all the information from our chart on the previous page since we know we're looking for the length and the width okay so we're just making guess and checks here all right so i don't know we need to get to 360 maybe i'm just going to come up with a number i don't know let me try 12 it really doesn't matter what number i'm going to say that's 12 and so of course now i am trying to find one and three fifths of that length so one and three fifths that was my lucky number times 12 well, that's going to equal, yeah, you see that? That's got a hole here of fifth fifths. So we have actually eight fifths. So we have eight fifths times 12. 96 over five is, ooh, my goodness, a large number. 19 and one fifth. Ooh, my goodness, a large number there. And then so here, the area then would have to be the length times a 19 and one fifth. In this case, I wouldn't want to rewrite this as 12 times 96 over 5. And that's just going to be a huge number. We have to do 96 times 12. So that's going to be 1,152 divided by 5. And 2, that's going to go into 0 times. You're going to end up with 2 fifths. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So am I even close? Uh, sort of. I need to get to 360. So I guess 230 is not too bad although i would definitely say we have to try a longer length now what would have been nice 
is if the number that we chose was a little bit more compatible. All right, so I'm going to have to do some shrinkage on this to make some more room. So I can shrink him so that he's way up here. So I think what's key here, I think in the next number I'm going to choose, I don't know if this is going to make a difference at all. Like here we chose 12. So I know I'm close. So if I chose, I don't know, let me go ahead and try 18 and let's see what happens. So here's 18. And of course, we're going to take that 1 and 3 fifths of that 18. Again, at least the nice thing here is we already know that this is 96 over 5. Oh, no, it's not. Take that back. Yeah, at least we know this is 8 fifths and 8 fifths times 18. So we have to do 18 times 8, 144 over 5. So 28 and 4 fifths. All right, so now let's go ahead and check. So if we're saying the length is 18, we're going to have to take that 18 times that 28 and 4 fifths. That's what we're trying to figure out. So let's just rewrite that. So we do have to multiply 144 by 18. Oh, not looking forward to that, but let's go ahead and do that and get it over with. I'll write it down here. Okay, so let's just see, is that even possible? The answer seems reasonable because it is larger. However, let me double check my work. Ah, I just saw my mistake. So that goes to two. There we go. Ah, uh -huh. so five's going to go into 25. That's going to go in there five times. No remainder. Five will go into nine one time four left over five is going to go into 42 looks like eight times we're going to end up having two left over so 518 oh my goodness we're getting closer okay so we need uh we need to get a shorter length or a longer length we are trying to get 360 so we need a shorter length okay i need to shrink all this down shrinky 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 okay i'm just doing this so that that way you can see what i'm doing there so i can make another row is there any way i can make a double of him i can Awesome. Look at the perfect squiggly line, just like the one up above. What can I say? I try. Okay. Too big, too small. I don't know. Let's let's try 15. 15 and 5. Maybe that'll help out it being a little bit more compatible. I don't know. Let's find out. So we have 1 and 3 fifths, and that means we're going to be multiplying the 15 to find out what the, yeah, to find out what the width is, because 1 and 3 fifths of that, I guess. Okay. Or the other length, I should say. Well, again, we have, uh, yeah, we still have 8 fifths times 15 okay so 15 times 8 120 over 5 yeah we have 120 and 120 over 5 is actually 5 goes into 12 two times oh yeah it's going to have two left over the 20 that's going to make it 24 so 24 so this big mess here you see it's 24 so 1 3 fifths of 15 is 24 cool okay let's let's check it out so we have 15 times 24 oh my goodness they're like normal numbers now this is 15 times 2 which is 20 so 50 times 20 well 50 times 2 is 30 plus another 0 plus 15 times 4 15 times 4 is 60 so 360 yes oh my goodness I can't believe it that's what we want Whoo! look at this disaster oh my goodness correct yes 360 Wow so the dimensions of the bottom of the kitten's bed will be, that's right, 15 inches by 24 inches. If the longer side was still that one and three-fifths the length of the shorter side, and the shorter side was 20 rather than what we had in our problem, which was 15, well, then we're just going to take one and three-fifths times 20. And in that case, we'd have to figure out what would that be. One and three-fifths times 20, eight-fifths. So definitely is one and three fifths. You say this is the same times the shorter side, which is 20, which is equal to 160 over five, which is equal to three. That's going to three times, right? There we go. So it's going to equal 32. So the area of the bottom of the bed would actually have to be 20 by 32. We just figured it out right now. Uh, so let's write that down. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. What a doozy of a problem. But I like all the color. Yes, I do. I like the green, the blue, the red, the brown. Oh, my goodness. Very nice. But, and hopefully we weren't too loud that we woke up the kitty. Don't want an angry little kitty. Bad kitty. Okay. <laughs> my friends, it's time to say adios. It's been fun. It's been real. It's been real fun. Until next time, live long and prosper.